You've probably seen online by now people flexing those little devices on their arms. They're called continuous glucose monitors or CGMs for short and were originally invented for diabetics to help control blood sugar levels to prevent life-threatening emergencies. But more recently health influencers have got their hands on them and are convincing healthy people that they need one too. And this is all to avoid one thing, glucose spikes. Glucose spike. Moderate spike. Has a glucose spike. You simply cannot believe the things that drive your blood glucose up. You might have seen influencers posting graphs with dramatic red lines warning you that if your blood sugar levels rise after a meal, you're accelerating aging, triggering inflammation, and even setting yourself up for an early death. So I want to tell you the real story of CGMs and how influencers and billion dollar companies have turned normal human biology into something to fear. They're building an empire selling you the illusion of health. And by the end of this video, you'll understand why glucose tracking for healthy people isn't wellness at all, but it's instead a glorified eating disorder rebranded as science with Gen Z paying the price. If you're new here, my name's Esh, a medical doctor working in London, and I host this show Science Says where we break down the viral health trends you see online, all to answer one simple question. What does the science really say? So please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Throughout this video, I'll use the terms glucose and sugar interchangeably because in this context, they basically mean the same thing. So CGMs were invented as medical devices, which were tools to help people with diabetes track their blood sugar levels in real time. Most people have heard of diabetes, but I wanna quickly clarify and run through what it actually is. So there's two main types. You have type one diabetes, which is an autoimmune condition which you're born with, where the body attacks the insulin producing cells. That's the hormone that lowers blood sugar levels, as well as type two diabetes. That's a condition that usually develops later in life and is often linked to poorer lifestyle factors. So think like not exercising and eating too much McDonald's. But in both cases, the body struggles or outright fails to regulate glucose properly and blood sugar levels can rise to dangerously high levels, which not only causes long-term damage, but can also lead to serious, even life-threatening emergencies. And that's why CGMs were so powerful for diabetics. They give people real-time awareness to prevent those crises. And before CGMs, people used to prick their fingers every couple of hours just to test themselves. But recently, this has shifted and CGMs are being marketed and glamorized as wellness tools that everyone should be buying to optimize their health. And this is all to avoid glucose spikes. You'll even see influencers warning you about everything from bananas to oatmeal because they spike your blood sugar. And on the surface, the logic sounds convincing. If in diabetes where you can't control blood sugar levels and high blood glucose levels causes damage, then wouldn't it make sense for healthy people just to avoid spikes too? And that's exactly the fear that influencers are pushing. You'll hear things like the more glucose spikes you have, the faster you age, or every spike is inflammation. And this is all creating a wave of health anxiety with people obsessively tracking every meal, avoiding entire food groups completely, and even skipping meals altogether. By now you're probably wondering what even is a glucose spike? But I actually first wanna focus on what even is glucose. Glucose is a sugar molecule and it's the fuel your body needs to survive. We don't usually eat pure glucose on its own, but instead we eat carbohydrates like this Haribo or the sugar in your tea or bread. And what we're really eating is a chain of glucose molecules linked together. And when we chew and digest carbs, special enzymes in our mouth, stomach and intestines break down these bonds, releasing those individual glucose molecules, which are then absorbed into our blood. And from there, they're delivered to every cell in our body. And we use that glucose for energy to stay alive. It's what powers your heart to pump blood, your brain to think and your respiratory muscles to breathe. Without glucose, you would literally die. And I've seen patients come into the hospital in a coma because their blood glucose levels were dangerously low, which caused their body just to shut down. So glucose spikes is when your blood sugar levels rise quickly after you eat, especially a meal rich in carbs. But the thing is, they're completely normal. In healthy people, when blood sugar level rises, the pancreas releases a hormone called insulin. And insulin helps move glucose out of the body and into the cells, where it's used then for energy. That's why even if your blood sugar level spikes after eating, in healthy people, it naturally just comes back down. Now, again, if you're diabetic, that's different and your blood sugar levels stay high and that's a problem. But for healthy people, these quick rises and falls are just how your metabolism is supposed to work. But there's been a big push from health and fitness influencers telling healthy people that they need to track every glucose rise. Now, I'm all about empowering people to better understand their health. And if wearing a CGM has genuinely helped you make better, healthier decisions, then that's great. But I also wanna show you the problem with fixating on blood glucose spikes, especially if you're already healthy. So I decided to buy a CGM for myself. I'm gonna fit the CGM, it's gonna go on my arm, and then I'm gonna do an experiment to see how my body reacts to different food over the next couple of weeks, and then I'm gonna share that with you. Health influencers will always make this seem really satisfying and glamorize it, and they will do some ASMR cuts. Um, I'll try my best, but no promises. So the CGM is on now. And so for the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna be doing an experiment and just sharing how my body reacts to different foods.
So it's been a couple of days since I last put this in, and it's been quite interesting to be honest, seeing how my blood sugar levels spike according to different foods. But there's specifically three glucose spikes that I wanted to share with you. So the first was after I came home from work and I was eating an apple sat at my desk. The second was a bit of an experiment and I wanted to see how one single fried KFC chicken wing would change my blood sugar levels. And the third was after I just exercised at the gym. I was doing some weights and I came home to find that my blood sugar levels had spiked. And most interestingly, I found that the apple had spiked my blood glucose the most, followed by exercise and then the chicken wing. So according to the logic that you should avoid blood glucose spikes at all costs, it would mean that I should be eating more fried chicken wings, exercising less and completely avoiding apples. That's not medical advice and you definitely should not be doing that. But in all seriousness, do you see how flawed it is to be changing your diet accordingly to your glucose spikes? It doesn't really tell you much about how healthy your diet is or much about how healthy you are as a person unless you have diabetes. And that's where the glucose fear mongering completely falls apart. Glucose spikes are normal and the real problem isn't a spike after eating, it's when the blood sugar levels stay chronically high over a long period of time and they just don't come back down. This is where health influencers really start twisting the science. Let me just play you this clip just to show you what I mean. As a human being, from the moment you're born, you slowly glycate, you slowly cook like a chicken in the oven. And then when you're fully cooked, you die. I know it sounds crazy, but it is. It does sound crazy. And on the inside, you're actually browning. Hot. So if you look at the cartilage of a baby, it's white. If you look at the cartilage of somebody who's 100 years old, it's brown. See, that just sounds scary. Glycation is cooking and it's aging. Now, why am I telling you this? Because every time you have a glucose spike, it accelerates glycation. Glucose causes this cooking, causes this glycation, mm. causes this aging. So the more glucose spikes you have, the faster you age. Okay, that's enough of that. This genuinely annoys me because it manipulates half-truths and sprinkles in just enough science sounding language to sound believable. And it makes it really hard for the average person to know what to believe. So. I can't believe I'm talking about this, but when you first put a chicken in the oven, it's obviously cold, squidgy, and pink. And then when you cook it, it becomes brown and crispy. This is called the Maillard reaction, a chemical reaction between proteins and sugars under high heat. It's what gives browned, crispy chicken its delicious flavor when you roast it. Now, there are some similarities between cooking a chicken and something that happens inside the human body called glycation. When blood sugar levels are consistently high, glucose molecules can stick to proteins in your body, like red blood cells, creating what are called glycated proteins. And over time, these glycated glycated proteins can cause serious damage like blindness, kidney failure and other complications, especially in people with uncontrolled diabetes. But, and this is critical, glycation inside the human body isn't the same as cooking a chicken. When your blood sugar levels rise after eating a meal, some glucose temporarily attaches to proteins, but this early glycation is reversible. So once your blood sugar levels drop back down to normal, the glucose detaches. It's only when blood sugar levels stay consistently high over a long period of time, like in uncontrolled diabetes, that these bonds become permanent, leading to serious tissue damage. It's not just a temporary spike after eating. Cooking a chicken requires a long continuous blast of heat and healthy blood sugar spikes after a meal are more like putting a chicken in the oven for five minutes then pulling it out and letting it cool and then repeating that. You're not going to end up with a cooked chicken. You're not going to slowly cook yourself to death just because you had a piece of fruit that spiked your blood sugar levels. So when you hear people like the glucose goddess say things like this. So the more glucose spikes we have, the faster glycation happens, the faster we're going to get wrinkles, the faster we're going to cook, the faster we're going to age, and the faster we're going to die. It's not just oversimplified, it's wrong, and it misrepresents complex biology, and it creates fear around completely normal, healthy eating patterns. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying you should ignore blood sugar levels entirely. If being more mindful of glucose genuinely helps you to make healthier choices, then that's amazing, and I support that. And yes, there is strong evidence that repeated massive blood sugar surges can increase your risk of developing type 2 diabetes. By far, the biggest driver of blood sugar level issues isn't those glucose spikes after a meal but instead it's eating too many calories and building fat around your organs so the obsession with flattening your glucose curve for healthy people is turned into a hyper fixation on controlling every bite of food you eat it's not just about eating healthier anymore but it's about fearing your own biology and that fear has been packaged marketed and sold by influencers who claim they're just saving your health now, don't get me wrong. I think the message to cut back on ultra processed food and refined carbs is a good one. But the idea that you need to constantly worry about glucose spikes and that every small rise in blood sugar levels is a threat is a lie dressed up as science. Health influencers are pathologizing something that happens to literally everyone. And that fear has created a culture of disordered eating. And that's something we as doctors are seeing firsthand. 
And I've got patients that have come to me in clinic saying they've stopped eating fruit because they've seen, you know, their, their blood sugar spike temporarily. So you create a problem and then you provide the solution. There's now an entire movement online demonizing fruit because of the natural sugars that cause a perfectly normal blood sugar level rise. You said grapes are sugar bombs that are they problematic. They are sugar bombs. There's as but much sugar that... in a cup of grapes as in a Hershey's candy bar. Yeah, but that requires nuance. A child hears, a mother hears, grapes are a sugar bomb, might as well give them Hershey's. They will give them Hershey's. <laughs> Might as well. The wellness culture behind glucose obsessions has taken normal human biology and made it sound terrifying. And that fit is one of the most powerful emotions you can exploit. I recently came across this post on Reddit that I wanted to read out. So the title is Anxiety from CGM. It reads, when I first started wearing a CGM, everything was fine. But now two months later, I feel like I begin to grow a bit of anxiety from wearing them. I constantly check my numbers on the app and usually my mind is set on it, it should be lower no matter what the number is. I'm always worried to the point where it feels like it takes up too much room in my head. And there's also some other comments that I found on TikTok too. So let me be very clear. Glucose spikes are not a malfunction. They're not a warning sign and they're literally how your body is supposed to work after eating. But influencers have twisted basic physiology into something you need to fear, into a problem you need to fix. And people are building empires off of fear, selling blood sugar guides, pushing supplements, promoting CGM affiliate links and monetizing the narrative that your body is broken by default. This is wellness capitalism at its most dangerous because it wears a lab coat. When disordered eating is rebranded as data-driven health, it doesn't look like a red flag. It looks like discipline. It looks like biohacking. It looks like optimization. But it's the same fear, just better marketed, and people are profiting from it. If you don't have diabetes, glucose levels after a meal are something you shouldn't be obsessing over or worrying about. If you truly want to improve your health, focus on what actually matters. Move your body, manage your cholesterol levels, keep your blood pressure in a healthy range, build a sustainable relationship with food, not one based on fear. If you want to learn more and want to learn real science-backed ways to protect your health as you age, then watch this video here. Until next time, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.